Hi there, my name is Chris Unwin and I'm a solution engineer for Redgate Software. Now today we're going to be uh, trying to break the world record I think for database DevOps and um, we're going to be setting up an all Azure SQL database pipeline with SQL change automation in under 10 minutes. I don't know if this record has ever been attempted before, but fortunately right here on the Redgate YouTube channel on our solution engineer videos, you'll know that anything is possible. So let's get started. So today I have got a few uh, Azure SQL databases. As you can see, we've got our dev database. We've got a database that I'm going to use for my continuous integration build production and staging. So let's see how far we can get in 10 minutes with these databases. Now I have just got them on a very low pricing tier, standard S0, 10 DTUs, uh, about 11 GBP uh, per month if you want to leave these running. Uh, I won't be as I do not have <laughs> too many uh, Azure bucks as Kendra Little calls them, uh, but we shall, uh, we shall use these just for the purposes of today. Now I've set up an Azure DevOps uh, repository, just an empty repository with a simple readme file in it. I haven't even modified the readme file. It is a completely empty repo that I have cloned down to my local workstation. Now, if we jump over into Management Studio, you'll notice I already have those Azure databases on the left. Let's go ahead and create our new project. So I hit new project in SQL change automation and we'll call this one the uh, Azure SQL DB project, which uh, makes perfect sense, I think. We'll browse to our, uh, we'll browse to where we want to locate this repo. Now, um, again, I've cloned this down recently, so I'm just going to pop it in that folder I showed you and we're going to pick our development source. Now, of course, I'm going to pick an existing database and I'm going to go ahead and pick my DM non-production database. I'm just using SQL auth for the purposes of today. Keep it nice and simple. There we go. Pick a database and it's our dev database. Tremendous. So that's been grabbed. The shadow database will go on to the same location as the uh, development database. So that's going to spin up an Azure SQL DB for use as our shadow. Now that can be located elsewhere should you need to locate it elsewhere. I'm fine with just putting it in dev. Let's go ahead and hit next. Now we need to specify our filters. So for me, I'm going to make sure that we filter out users and permissions. And you can find in the documentation where you can do this. I'm just going to use a filter I've already generated um, using SQL compare. You should have an SCPF file. I'm also going to edit the comparison options. Just make sure that users permissions and role memberships and user properties are unticked. I'm also going to untick the T SQL T framework and just double check. Everything seems reasonable. Hit next. And now we need to baseline. Now, I'm going to baseline against our staging environment because staging looks exactly like prod. Uh, and I don't want to put any extra overhead on prod. So let's go ahead and do that. How are we doing? Okay, we're at four minutes. We can do this. We're going to go from our staging database. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to create our baseline. So this is going to create a baseline project into that folder we cloned down from our Azure DevOps repo. It's going to give us everything we need, the mi initial baseline migration, the state of our upstream environments, so that we can then capture any changes on that. <clears throat> With the slowdown at the moment, this is because an additional database is being created for our shadow. So that effectively means that when we create the shadow, we're going to be baselining and then run that baseline script to create the shadow. And that means that we have a validation that our database can be built from scratch. Now, effectively, then we build our small incremental migrations on top of that. 
And that's how we do our CI build and ultimately our deployment of those changes as well. Let's have a quick look in the portal, in the Microsoft portal and see if our shadow database has been spun up. It's still in process. Come on, Azure dashboard. I can, I believe in you. Okay, fantastic. So it has set the database project up. There's our baseline migration you can see here at the bottom. Let's just zoom in on that. <clears throat> so that's the baseline for our target, the DM database production. I'm going to hit check for changes. And this is going to compare our project with our dev database. <clears throat> and it's going to figure out if there are any changes. We should see that our project has now appeared in our folder, our migrations, programmable objects, schema model, etc. Fantastic. So we've got all of that. The provisioning information should be updated with our uh, with our Azure SQL DB information there. Nothing sensitive, just the stuff we need to know to create an Azure SQL DB. I can't be penalized for missing 10 minutes if I'm purely waiting on Azure. Hit refresh. And it's checking for changes. Come on, you can do this. Oh dear, I think we're going to miss it, but that's absolutely fine. So let's just double check and see how Dev's getting on. So Dev seems to be, yep, we're seeing a, we're seeing a bit of an increase there in uh, activity, which is absolutely fine. This should be done very, very soon. And hopefully once we're finished checking for changes, maybe I can jump to the version control tab already. That might be a bit sneaky. Uh, Fantastic. So we've jumped over to our uh, version control tab, and this is going to let us do our initial commit of those files. And I'm just going to push them directly to my main branch. There we go. So I've committed and pushed from within SQL change automation, and that's pushed it up to Azure DevOps. So a few processes are going to continue spinning in the background, but we have now everything we need to actually do our pipeline. So we've still got a few minutes left. We've still got two and a half minutes left. Let's create a pipeline. I'm going to go from Azure repos git and I'm going to use some YAML and I'm just going to go with a starter pipeline. Now I'm going to use a Windows latest VM image because we want to run on uh, we want to run on Windows and I'm just going to jump into steps and all we're going to do is show the assistant. We're going to look for the Redgate plugin that you can get for Azure DevOps. And we're going to add build. Build a SQL change automation project. Uh, and let's go ahead and we'll call what where is the SQL change automation project? It's in there. So Azure SQL DB DevOps. And I believe the project. Oh, I've got to double check what the project is. If I close this down, the project is called Azure SQL DB project dot SQL proj. Azure SQL DB project dot SQL proj. And we want it to just be called Azure DB dot database. We'll build against local DB because it's nice and quick. If you don't have uh, if you, you know, you can also build against the CI database. That might be slightly quicker um, if you've got a better tier Azure DB. And we're going to specify the NuGet package version and append the build ID. Let's add. There we go. We've got our task. Right. So I'm going to save and run. Now I'm committing again directly to the main branch. Now, if you have any objects that aren't supported by SQL Server Express, you will need to instead point that at your Azure SQL database and do the build there. Whereas for me, local DB should work just fine. And again, hopefully I've specified the correct name of my project and that will be picked up. And we're okay, so we're already checked out. Perfect. Checked out onto that Windows latest VM. Redgate change automation build kicking in now. That should happen against our local DB. 
And whilst that's happening, I'm going to set up the release quickly and we'll go to staging. We're about to go over 10 minutes. Unfortunately, I can't uh, beat that world record, but we will certainly try and get this finished. Uh, so let's just deploy to uh, staging for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our build pipeline into our release. And we'll set a continuous deployment trigger as well. So let's modify this one. Let's change the release pipeline to uh, staging deploy. Why not? And we'll edit the task there. Now, again, we're just going to be using the SQL change automation plugin. So I look for Redgate and there is our release. Now, if I was doing this, we're still going to try and get this done as fast as possible. So instead of creating a release artifact, and if you watch any of our other change automation videos, Redgate University, etc., you will know that the uh, release artifact is really key for looking through any potential changes. Now, I'm going to just deploy database changes from a build artifact, just go and we'll pick our package path. Let's go. Hopefully our package has been produced. Oh no, it hasn't been produced yet. That's okay. Uh, let's open up our pipelines in a separate tab. Double check where we are. Check the job. So it's still building. Our uh, Windows VM latest is perhaps not as good as we would like it to be, but hopefully we should see the build against local DB happen imminently. Whilst we're still waiting on that, let's go ahead and uh, continue the setup of our deployment options. Now, it's fairly straightforward. We're deploying from package, deploying from build artifact. We'll provide the, we'll provide the location of the build object shortly. Uh, I need to provide the SQL Server instance and database name. Now, what I'm going to do is just very quickly swap. There we go. A shameless plug for DBL whilst I grab out the target here. Let's quickly uh, connect and I'll copy that out. Paste and the database name is, I believe, DM database staging. The only reason I've swapped, of course, to this shameless plug for the Redgate podcast, DBL, which you should definitely listen to. It's available where all good podcasts are available. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just configure my pipeline so you can't see my password. Of course, if I was doing this securely, uh, I would have passed it in using a pipeline variable. Now our build has failed. Let's very quickly troubleshoot that. Edit what has happened. Click open in new tab is possibly the best thing that was ever invented. We take a look. Specified path doesn't exist. Ah, okay. So um, I have provided a dud link to the SQL project file which is entirely my bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into our repo and we're going to go to Azure SQL DB project. Aha, uh -huh. there we go, that's the problem. And then the SQL proj file, Azure SQL DB project SQL proj, there it is. Save, save, run, run. Tremendous, that's going to now rerun that project for us. And we have got our package path and we're gonna to have to unfortunately wait for this to complete the build now. So let's see what happens in just a second in the magic of video editing when our build has completed. And there we have it. Isn't that magic? A headset appeared on my head in no time at all. <laughs> no, so we've uh, we've actually carried out a successful build now. I provided the actual path to the SQL project, as you can see here. Successful pipeline run, which means that we should now have access to our package path in the release step. There it is. There's the database build artifact. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to change that 51 out here for the build.buildid. There we go. So we're just using a variable. 
and we're going to go ahead and check that. Yep, there we go. There's everything that we need. I'm going to hit uh, save on that. OK. And then we're going to create a release. So we're going to take the latest version of our build with queued release one. Now let's see what happens. We're at 15 minutes, so unfortunately not quite as fast as I would have liked. But hey ho, not a problem. Let's get deployed. 15 minutes is still good for an end-to-end -end dev to staging uh, deployment pipeline. Of course, adding on production would be just child's play from here. We're just copying the steps and promoting to production. That's fair enough. Now, interestingly, it's uh, it's again, like I say, it's important to create the release artifact where we can for review purposes. Uh, that's really, really helpful to have uh, so that you can review what's changed, any code analysis issues, anything like that. But for now, we're just kicking off the release to our staging environments. Uh, so the connection with live updates has been terminated, which is interesting. So let's just jump through to our releases and see. Perhaps this is an Azure DevOps issue. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we're at the perform deploy from package. So this is going to look at our build artifact and it's going to say, aha, I found the build artifact. I'm going to go ahead and deploy this to the staging environment. One would hope. And then we can very quickly check. There we go. New database connection. Let's just check everything. Yep new database release artifact. So it's still creating the release artifact and generating us our patch script so that we can deploy to staging. Now, of course, we baselined from staging and we're not actually going to have anything pending deployment because we haven't captured any changes. But we should see, at least now successfully, if I jump into my staging environment, we should see that we do now at least have, if I refresh those tables, there we go. So we can see that we have the migration log and schema snapshot tables there now. So if we do capture any changes in our project and commit them to version control, then that's just going to go ahead and let us uh, build them, deploy them to our staging environment. It's just that simple. Now, you've seen that we can get up and running with SQL change automation and Azure SQL database in basically no time at all. It's very, very quick, very, very easy to do. I've done it in about 15 minutes, including waiting for those database environments. Uh, so maybe 10. But you can find a lot more information about SQL change automation and working with any uh, SQL Server databases on the Redgate Hub, uh, uh, of course, on Redgate University. And of course, stick around for more wonderful content here on the Solutions Engineer channel. For now, though, thanks for stopping by.